What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Dispensary Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Kwan, the founder of Canabud Marketing. If you're looking for marketing for any or all of your dispensaries, both in U.S. and Canada, I am your guy. And I'm joined here by Sarah, the owner and curious curator of Rabbit Hole Dispensary located in downtown Ottawa. To the right or to the left of her, drinking the coffee in the purple Outcast shirt, is the co-founder <laughs> of Hybrid Farm. I'm a recognized hybrid farm because I also did another podcast with Raheem, the other co-founder of that location. It's Canada's first and only pharmacy serving all aspects of medicine, including medical cannabis and alternative therapies. And then last but not least, joined by Ming. She's been involved in the cannabis space for over 10 years now, a titan, a former leader of the legacy movement, and now she brings her expertise to the legal space in Ottawa. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Awesome. So we'll hop right into it. So uh, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Rabbit Hole, and we'll get the ball rolling that way. Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah. Also go by Alice here in the store. Um, I am, I guess you could say, an entrepreneur. <laughs> I have yeah. a couple of companies. I've always dreamed of being in cannabis. But it was really the pandemic that kind of drove me, as I think a lot of people, to kind of take the plunge and do something that I've always wanted to do. So we've so we started working on this cannabis store about a year ago and just opened up a couple of months and just really excited to be able to be a part of it. So Awesome. Awesome. Ming, how about you? Um, well, I've been in the cannabis industry for over 10 years now. I started off pretty much got into it within the, cat the medical side of cannabis. And then works my way around the different like avenues, especially recreational. Now I work in the recreational market. Been a very big advocate for mental health as well, uh, and the use of cannabis for mental health and for chronic pain too. And yeah, now I'm managing Sarah's dispensary in Ottawa, and it's been a blast. Fantastic, <laughs> Angelo. Yes. Uh, thanks again. So uh, you said I'm also co-founder of Hybrid Farm. Uh, and I'm a business partner in Farm Labs, which is a medical cannabis repository that just came to market. I've been in cannabis for over 20 years, doing this a long time. I've worked for LPs in the past and whatnot. Uh, I came across this opportunity for Ming, who introduced me to Sarah, who needed some assistance in opening this new beautiful space. Awesome. Awesome. So, Sarah, I know, you know, we had some technical issues on the last podcast, so we touched <laughs> on this briefly. But for the rerun of the podcast... How about, you know, you tell, you know, the rest of the audience how you got, you know, this, this killer team together. I, I guess it started with me. You want me to tell the, the, the love story of the, how, Ming, how Ming and I met? Yes, yes. <laughs> she slid in those DMs. Yeah. Yes. So um, I kind of like, I mean, I, I've loved cannabis since, you know, before we should ever recommend that people love cannabis. Um, <laughs> and I knew for a very long time that I wanted to get involved and I had started like different kinds of social media marketing things with some friends from university and like just kind of dabbled in the industry. And so at one point I paid for a list of all the biggest cannabis influencers and started following them on social media, all the, the biggest ones in Canada. And that kind of marketing dream died down because I realized I hate social media, but I did keep following ganja babe because she was just so cool and i just loved her vibes and i just thought she was so awesome so when i decided to open the dispensary and i wanted it to be located in ottawa um so that i could be close to politicians and maybe help with some lobbying for the industry right. uh, i was like man can you imagine like can you imagine if ming would like run my store so i right. slid in her dms and was like hey I don't know how busy you are these days. I don't know if you're open to it, but like, would you be down to like maybe talk about a job offer? And she replied immediately. And I think within a week we met. And yeah. then within a couple of days, we started drafting yeah. the contract. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So then, and it's been wonderful. Like, I think from my perspective, yeah, it's, it's been, been like so cool. awesome. So, we've been blessed because it's like, you know, when you meet people, especially through Instagram, like I didn't, like, I had no idea who Sarah was. She had no idea who I was. <laughs> knows me through social media, but doesn't really know who I am, right? A hundred percent. And it just worked out very well. We did one trip together and we didn't kill each other. So, I told Sarah, I'm like, we're good. I'm like, we're going to be fine. Yeah. Because when you go on trips with people, it's a do or die thing. And we, like we were, we work really well together. Yeah. And as well and with Angela fun. too. I met Angela, what, like almost like 10 years ago within the medical aspect of cannabis. And then I knew it was a new brainer to have Angela come and help us with the brand and start the dispensary. Yeah. Ming introduced me to Angela probably within two or three weeks yeah. of us starting. And 
it was yeah we've we have been together ever since awesome that's that's look <laughs> you guys are using social media for what it was originally made for to, to cultivate relationships and not just you know flex on the gram you know, with your Lambos in the background and stuff like that. So that's, oh that's fantastic. It's yeah. changed so I was much. actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I was, I've been on Instagram since the beta. I had beta access, luckily. Wow. Many, wow. many, Posts many, many moons I really ago. need to get your autograph then. It sounds, you know, you're, you're the go-to guy. <laughs> but Instagram at that point in my life, uh, it, it truly did change my life. Because it was the first time that people were sharing the way they view the world with just a simple photo. Right. And this is before it was even photos of meals and stuff. So right. it was really yeah. easy for me to to search for the things I'm passionate about, like cannabis, skateboarding, comics, graffiti, blah, blah. But then this whole world came up. Um, around that time, my youngest was born. He's now 11. So that gives you an idea. For a lot of people on Instagram, that was the first baby they ever saw born online. I got gifts given oh. to me from like Australia. Get out of here. <laughs> no way. Really. Nuts. The amount of, Get out of here. That yeah. truly did... In my, like you just said, that was the purpose of social media. Now right. things have changed drastically in the past 11 years. But, Capitalism, yay. <laughs> but the uh, way things used to be, it yeah. was, it was life-changing for, for myself, yeah. That's, so you were one of the first social media influencers then? <laughs> Definitely not an influencer, but I, I, uh, I, I do I do use that tool daily, daily right. for all my jobs. I mean, I technically, your son would be the first. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, your, son, yeah, your yeah. son's the one that got freebies from the, the strangers on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, let's, let's get a timeline for the listeners. So you guys hooked up about a year and a half-ish ago? Year, yeah, year. 2021 and July. Uh, July well, April. like July 31st. Yeah. It was like August of yeah. Yeah, 20. But we were talking early, like during COVID. Like Sarah and I were like... I think if, I, if oh, we go up. back, like if we go back, oh, she totally did. <laughs> if we go back in the messages for sure, 2021, Sarah messaged me, and then yeah, it was just the beginning of COVID, I think. And I was like, yeah, we'll talk. And like, like we just had like different exchanges, and then finally it was like she right. made up. I just like I got, we're gonna do this, and then we met up. I I started working with Sarah officially in August of 2021, and then we opened the store in end of March 2022. Yeah, very end, oh. early April. So, sir, did you have your license before you got in contact with Ming and like had all of that sorted and yes. then developed your team? I'm just yeah. trying to paint a picture for like, so for example, you know, getting a few inquiries from, you know, especially in the States where they're first starting to legalize someone out of New Mexico, they just got their first license. So nice. just trying to paint a picture on like how that timeline works in terms of when do you have to do the legal stuff to get all the stuff ready? When should you get the team organized? And then how do you execute on that? So like in terms of the timeline of like how you started things, it was like, you know, you got all of the legal stuff, the licensing set up already, the real estate, and you had that ready. And then you brought Ming on or no, did you bring a I brought Ming on. Like I didn't want to make, I figured spending extra money on intelligent people with experience who knew more than I did was way better especially when you're signing long leases like in the cannabis industry you still are treated as if you are like uh, almost like a criminal like i can't have a regular bank account Um, and so if there's like a lot of mistakes that you can make that you can't unmake and so i just wanted to make sure that i actually was surrounded by people who knew things better than i did to gear me in the right direction so i brought them on before i even started looking at real estate in fact the, the agent that we use is an old friend of Ming's that helped her uh, like before with 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 locations and stuff. So uh, yeah, no, I definitely uh, did nothing until (laughs) I had this team. I was just, yeah, except pick Ottawa because I wanted to be close to politicians. Nice, nice. So this this team helped me build up everything. So okay, that's that's awesome. I mean, yeah, like you you want to reduce the the compounding effect of mistakes and like. By bringing yeah. on good teammates, I, I think that makes you know a huge impact. No matter what industry you're in, right? If you don't know what you're doing, like the cost of making mistakes is the cost that not a lot of people look at. They're like, yeah, I'll save ten thousand dollars on you know not hiring this person, but then you're going to spend millions of dollars in the long run because you either can't do it fast enough, you can't do it at all, or you just yeah. move in the opposite direction, which is just like, hey, you know, that's complete yeah. failure. So, and also like Sarah, we're like what legalization up in 2018. Sarah was opening like we were opening the store way after a lot of stores have been established. So like the fact that she's like, no, I need help already so that we can like from people like Angela and I worked in this, well, I worked with Angela in the dispensary as well. And like he already had that experience. So it was just very easy 
to yeah, help like, her gu help guide her in a sense. Like we're obviously still learning a lot of like we still learn every day about different things, but just getting the basic of the business, figuring out what neighborhood to go in, kind of like theme we're going with and what we're gonna curate on the inventory. How saturated the market is yeah. and what to realistically right. expect, you know, like just things like that where key. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like I all I did for the first little while meeting Sarah was just disappoint her by saying, no, you can't do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Literally. I'm like, yeah, but if so we go bad, to social I media, they're like, no, 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 you can't. Do I'm like, okay, but we can hand out. They're like, no, nah. I'm like, but if we had me, no, 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 that's illegal. I'm like, well, how the hell is anyone making any damn money in this industry? Like, I don't get it. So, right, right. yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's very important. <laughs> so, I guess the question now is to both Angelo and Ming, like, how did you learn or figure out what you needed to do to then, you know, have the right path for rabbit hole. Like, was it trial and error? Did you know a lot of people, resources? Did you? Did I you think know personally, I think we both have like combined experience for both of us. Be a legacy is like forty years, right? So, right. Ottawa is a small city. Everyone knows everybody. Yeah. That's right. the first and foremost, and that's why I love Ottawa. So the cannabis community is very, very tight in Ottawa. Again, when it comes to, for example, LP reps. There's maybe 15 to 20 in town. We all know each other. We all get together at least once a month. Right. Yeah. So I think it was just learning from past mistakes, learning from past businesses. Because yeah. um, from Legacy, um, you know, Ming used to run uh, and, and, three. and yeah, three locations in the past. Right. I, I, I own a medical dispensary slash pharmacy. Um, and I used to run uh, an organization in the past called National Access Cannabis which is uh, pre-legalization, yeah. pre but a lot of still very busy with medical access. So I took all the lessons learned from those organizations and companies, right. what not to do and what to do. Right. I also, um, I ran the one plant here in Ottawa. I, oh, I nice. helped, I helped introduce one plant to the Ottawa landscape a few years back. Right. I think the best example I give current owners today, because I still get asked questions daily is that back then there was eight dispensaries in Ottawa. I was, the only one of the eight that had a parking lot, and I was also situated mm. across from a Costco. Wow. I was making twenty-four to thirty-two thousand dollars a day. Insane. You've done this podcast long enough that I highly <laughs> doubt anyone is doing that in a week right now. No, it's, so, it's especially yeah. right now. Very yeah. difficult. <laughs> yeah. So that that right there, meeting someone like Sarah, who, you know, is bright eyed and bushy tailed and has ambition. Those are the people I want to work with, but at the same right. time, it's my job to say, no. this is the reality that you're about to get yourself into. Right. So you have to prepare, again, from our life lessons, just knowing knowing kind of what's going to work and what's not. Right. No, yeah, that's that's awesome because, like, so, you know, the first takeaway for everyone who's listening, you know, find yourself a team that can kind of clear the fog, you know, clear the pathway. Because when I have my initial kind of consultations with people, like it's a lot of times just the business owner, they're kind of not sure what's going on, but I'm doing these podcasts, learning and all these things. And I tell them like, look, like you have a pathway in front of you, in front of you that's going to lead to a specific goal. But, you know, there might be like snakes on one side, there might be quicksand on another side, and you need to like chop down the bushes in order to get to that right path. And if you don't have the right people to kind of, you know, kind of shine that light uh, on where you need to go, then you still may end up where you want but it'll be very very difficult to get there so exactly yeah, I, and i, I have a tendency of taking way too long to get to my destination <laughs> 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 i like people are like no like stop getting distracted and just focus there <laughs> that's why we're here <laughs> i think i think it's also important to see how many boundaries you can push yeah. right uh, very you know, this this isn't my yeah. first location that i've helped open so i already know where i pushed it Right. So with this one, we definitely pushed it three steps farther than yeah. anything else I've done in the past. Yeah, yeah. we're just getting started. Yeah. People yeah. are very receptive, so we're we're happy that we're getting good feedback on the yeah. store and like how we're the how we're creating the prog products and just the vibes that we're giving and that we're creating for a community. Because like Angela said, the community is very small mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of safe spaces. And I feel like our store is slowly becoming like a cool safe space for people to just yeah. come like talk and show. Nice. And come as you are, bring yeah. a little weird, you know? That's it. Yeah, nice. So, I mean, that that brings me perfectly into the next question is, okay. so uh, with all these dispensaries popping up, it was very much like, yeah, I'm here. I'm, you know, I got the license. I got lucky in the lottery. I can sell products. But now these days, there's just so much competition. You know, you don't get the novelty of selling this new legal thing anymore. You have to have like a key differentiator that sets you apart from everyone else. 
So my question to you guys is like, what have you done with rabbit hole to cultivate this key differentiator so that you have new people coming in that otherwise wouldn't have come in or you keep your existing customers, you know, staying on board. I, f- I feel like I want to add that like for that, we made it inviting for people to come in. When you walk in front right. of a store, the windows aren't frosted. It's, I'm not going to toot our own horn, but it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Like, it's it's not like your Apple looking store that everybody had at the beginning of legalization for that time when it started, it was working. Now people like, we all have access to the same products and you're right. It's like, how are we going to differentiate ourselves by like across the street? We have another dispensary. Like what's the difference, you know, but people like the vibes. They love the staff. And it, it's just very, like, when you walk in, it's kind of like we, a couple of the reps have told us it's like a breath of fresh air walking into our dispensary. 100%. I think it's important to note that our entire staff is all from Legacy, yeah. every single one. Mm. Oh, yes. Well, except, except, for one. For one. Except, except for one. Except for one. one. But except for one. We don't hold it against them, but. No. Yeah. <laughs> the only person ever is actually working here right now. Um, yeah. Another thing I told Sarah when I met her is I said, my expectations for this location is for cannabis sales to be secondary. 100%. And, and that was only my goal anyway. To be first for the customer. Because, again, speaking, I know we're going to be going to a lot of now and then, like with the way it used to be, you know, uh, speaking to what she says about uh, an Apple looking cannabis store housing, you know, 65 sensory jars all full. There was a time where people were coming out of the cannabis closet. This was a new product. This was a new experience. That was needed. That is nowhere n- near needed anymore because right. people have been banged like banged over the head right so it's it really like i didn't know if this would risk my position with this team for me to kind of be firm to say i see the vision you have but from my experience now where every single person that walks into a dispensary goes directly to the cash Mm -hmm. they no longer have a look at the ambiance accessories for that matter because i also i I live in the accessory world i I work for zigzag one of the biggest brands in on the planet um, but it's, you'd think it'd be, uh, very simple for me to walk into a dispensary and people would be like, just, yeah, I'll take zigzags, but right. auxiliary goods are not paying bills, right? Um, even sales of the, the product that houses us aren't paying bills. So I'm really trying to push the whole experience factor on it. Which brings us to, I'm going to add on here. So oh, please do. Okay. So every, I heard this coming in and I didn't even realize it was happening as it was happening, but it, it did. Um, I created a store that kind of reflects like the inside of my brain a little bit. So when you meet me, like, you know, like when you meet my store, it seems like really well put together, a um, little bit of like old school vibes with like some, some feminine and masculine elements, like very fucking cozy. Sorry, I swear a lot. Very cozy. And, exciting. <laughs> um, and then we have a second floor mezzanine with this beautiful bay window um, that we've painted like very dark colors and we've, we're trying, we're still in the process of like adding some extra effects to it, right. but it's coming this like twisted, weird lounge space that we're calling right. like the Curiouser and Curiouser Lounge. And it's like, as you go up the stairs, which would like symbolize going into that rabbit hole, it's like you start to see more of like that cannabis culture. So we have things like I've taken an Alice in Wonderland kind of style table, flipped it upside down from the ceiling. And my sensory jars are in teacups that you can pull down from the ceiling. Wow. To look so when you come up, you see this like this, this, this tea party scene upside down right um we have like a wall of pictures where like some of the pictures don't tell anybody they open up and they've got buttons in them you can press it'll do things and so there's all these like little hidden things that like i find like when you're when you're someone who smokes cannabis you know there's like there's like immense pleasure in these like little ways you know what i mean and the other thing that i wanted to recreate was that feeling that i had back um pre-legalization when i go over to my really it was your everyone had a buddy right in every circle of friends, there was a buddy. They got a guy. Like, I got a guy. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like usually like one guy in a group of friends and you go over to his place and every, you go and you're like, oh, hey, like, hey, what's up? Like, I didn't know you'd be here. And then everyone sits yeah. down and you, and you share and you, and you look at it and you have a conversation. And that's really um, more of the vibes that we wanted to go to instead of this like corporate, oh, it's not really cannabis. It's like super legit. And like, and like, yeah. no, 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 we don't even call it weed anymore. We only call it cannabis. Like this is more of that, like your buddy's place, you go, you hang out. It's like, you know, we're, we're basically bringing the culture back to the yeah. industry because I mean, it's kind of been bland for the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to go ahead and say, I'm not afraid to. Yeah. I mean, like I, I, I work in Eastern Ontario with ZigZag. I've been in literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dispensaries. Right. And you know, 15 year old me is happier than a pig and shit that this exists, but 
<laughs> I, now, I need something different to really excite me now at this point right. in my life. Because like she said, we're all buying the same product. Right. There's a few unique drops and things that you can get in certain areas. But, you know, going back to like why we decided to do like 3D glasses, like that's something oh, yeah. very simple and kitschy that oh. we do, right? Yeah, we got 3D images everywhere. Yes. including our social media feed. Yeah, so our social media feed, if you do have 3D glasses at home, you can see a lot of our stuff in 3D, especially if you go to one of our stores, our buttons, um, I believe it's... Our website, too. Yeah, our website. Our website. Like, it's it's just those oh. little nuances yeah. that make you that know, difference. You know. yeah. I think the big thing, too, is that, like, one of our first ideas, Angelo would always bring up, like, he's a huge Disney fan, so yeah. it's always going down to, like, the Disney experience. experience. Yeah. Right. Like, what's going to make, uh, Angela said this one day, and it was, like, really quick to my head. It's, like, what's going to make you buy the ears at the end of your tour in the store? Yeah. Like, Because yeah, you, like, you know you're going to buy weed, but also, like, you're going to probably walk in and buy, you want one thing, but then after that experience, you're going to buy way more than what you yeah. can. There's a reason that every Disney ride ends at the gift shop. So if you can come into the rabbit hole and we can convince you to at least have a peek upstairs, engage in a simple conversation, Maybe you have one thing that you learn. As long as you learn one thing while being here, we've done our job. You've right. already, you've, you, if you come into the rabbit hole or any dispensary, you're coming in for weed. That's right. that part's already been established. Yes, yeah. So, so how can we do something a little more different so that when you go home or when you bring that weed to your friends in session, you're going to be like, you're never going to imagine this place I went to today. Yeah. They gave me 3D glasses and I stood upstairs and watched a few videos and. It was just so different, and, like, I can't wait to go back, right? So Yeah, we, we didn't want it to be, like, another chore on your list of things to do. We wanted to right. do like, something that you look forward to coming in. Right, to, like, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you guys are right. Like, it is increasingly becoming sterile, whether it's to fit specific regulations and what people do, or, or maybe it's because that's what people, you know, dispensaries think this is what they should do, right? But, like, ultimately, you're speaking to the core of what I think your consumers want, and you're doing what I would refer to as like, you're emotionally polarizing them like positively, right? Because Angelo, you mentioned it like, okay, they're coming into the shop, obviously, they're going to buy some sort of cannabis product, whatever it is. But the key differentiator is that you can emotionally polarize them to then purchase those, you know, those ears, but in this case, give you really good word of mouth or buy more product than they already have. And, you know, I think this is all gold. Uh, this is some really, really awesome stuff. And this would be just already, I know that this is one of the videos I'd recommend for the people that are saying, hey, I'm starting my dispensary. If you have any tips and tricks, I'm like, just watch this video. This is, this is, <laughs> this is really, really awesome. Um, because, yeah, the, the market's <laughs> changed, but you guys are doing some really awesome stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Um, so now going into the marketing and stuff, um, what I typically see for most dispensaries is that you have your loyal following, you have like, you know, the bulk of your purchases coming from recurring people, unless you're in like a tourist area, and then some of them are coming in from new. Um, that does vary here and there. But for the most part, it's like a larger split of recurring and then new. So it's a little bit harder to get new people coming in. Because I found again, might not be your guys situation. Um, but a lot of times, dispensaries are focusing on like the bottom of funnel activities, like the good in-store environment once the customer is already there, um, the loyalty programs, you know, that sort of stuff. What are you guys doing on the top of funnel in terms of your marketing mix to get people through the door? Um, and yeah, just to like try and drive new traffic to come in. Let's take it. Let me take it. Take it? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, our grand opening, which we had not too long ago, was a good example where we talked to the restaurant across the street, which is a Mexican restaurant. And we made a partnership with them in regards to a certain amount for free tacos that night. Right. We had an LP that that was here talking about one of their edibles. So anyone who spoke to that LP was given a ticket for a taco, just uh, relating food to food. Right, right. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yeah, so hot, know, sauce, hot sauce, sauce and tacos, tacos right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and again, just really engaging things that are outside the box. I was talking to the girls today. I'm planning on an event here soon where we're going to find Pokemon players. And we're going to start. Dungeons and Dragons. I saw your eyes. Oh, yeah. I saw your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and we might even do, like, we, yeah, we might even do like a D and D night, like yeah. We did a Simpson horror movie night last week, and this yeah. week we're doing a night well, where we yeah. Christmas. We did, yeah. So far, we did two movie nights on yeah. Thursdays, and then we have this lounge. Yeah, yeah. So, watching, we want people to come to in and chill. Your question: I guess the biggest thing we're doing is, I would say, guerrilla marketing in the yeah. store. We don't really have a set plan. Uh, our socials not done with hoop suite. It's done on the fly. It's done right. Daily. Right. Because again, you know, but for the people listening who don't know, hello, um, <laughs> you can't market. 
So I can't pay for a Google ad. I am not allowed to even like technically even just having a sign in front of your store is like a gray zone because you can't attract someone underage to come in and use cannabis. So it's not like I can like, you know, like if I, if I did pay to have a mail campaign, like I could risk, you know, getting in trouble for that. So, so you really have to be very, um, think outside the box. Think outside the box. So again, like with these movie nights and stuff, we can advertise that there's a movie night because we're advertising cannabis. Right. So it's, you know, there's like ways kind of around regulations that people are finding to try to do. Another great example, I'm going to do a plug here for another dispensary, actually. Um, Twist Cannabis just came out yeah. with Twirl Cannabis, right? So they've got like a, like a candy Not twirl store. Cannabis. Or, just sorry, twirl. Just twirl, sorry. Yeah. Just Twirl. And so Twirl is like an, um, a candy store connected. that's connected to the cannabis store. So Twirl can probably do advertisements, yes. but Twirl can't. And so it's like finding ways like this that you can maneuver within the industry. Yeah. Um, to try to like go out and, and do that, like what you call the upper funnel or whatever even, of prospecting even, that right now is not legally that possible. Yeah. You know? Even though the brand in Toronto ghost drops, they have their dispensary yeah. and then right yeah. beside they got the donuts, the yeah. six donuts. I, I think that's what they're called, but like you're getting munchies and you're getting <laughs> Yeah, it's right beside each other. Yeah. And I guess the, and then the last example would be in BC, there's THC located right beside Dank Mart and every Friday's Fresh Drop Fridays where they have yeah. a food truck outside. It's, it's again, all of this goes back to being in your friend's basement, being in your friend's backyard, being at a cottage, being cannabis has brought all of us together before legalization, legalization, put a damper in things, but also (laughs) help things. Right. How do we, until lounges exist, until the OCS is gone and we can have freedom to order both dreams right now, but until those things happen, (laughs) this is. And this is what I stress to owners because, like, I meet new owners all the time who are very cannabis naive, but they're nice people. And one example is some guy has a very small place. Every single square footage of display, he put product in. Mm. Shaking my head and I go, you realize these are all just colored bags. Mm -hmm. Nothing stands out. And I said, at this point, no one is going to be like, oh, that's what weed looks like. You need to take all of this square footage and put all auxiliary goods and accessories to balance where you're making your money from. He has since switched and he's improved, I think, by, I'd say maybe 14 to 16% in in his auxiliary goods sales, which for most locations, you're lucky to hit 8%, right? So it's like, yeah. yeah. No, that's like there. So there was a study done like on this thing called like decision fatigue and like they're trying to sell, I forgot what it was, but let's just say they're different cans of soup or might've been juice or something like that. And they were trying to sell like 15 to 20 different types of whatever it is. And they realized that they actually sold more of the product when they, you know, brought it down to, to three, right? Because there are just so many products out there that it's just like, okay, like, uh, like it's kind of overwhelming for, for, yeah. for, you know, to try and figure absolutely. it out. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, like, like, yeah, like I said, you guys are absolutely crushing it. So anybody, you know, if, if you want to learn anything about marketing your dispensary, you know, these are the guys to listen to. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah. 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 We, we charge only make money in the hours. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the gorilla partnerships i'm super interested in that like when you mentioned gorilla like i literally just wrote that down because like before i started all this types of marketing i used to work with a company that also used to do a lot of gorilla marketing uh what have been like your favorite types of activations that you've done to kind of help whether it's with rabbit hole or with any other store what have been some like really creative ideas that you're like, ah, that one was a, oh man, I have so one. many creative ideas. I mean, like we're just getting that started. We yeah. That we, we, I mean, we've only had a grand opening like two months ago, so we really yeah. have just started with the movie night. And I think, right. I think the 3d glasses, I think it deserves yeah. like a yeah. fun little check. I think it's outside yeah, the box. Yeah. Um, one I did in the past with the pharmacy, cause we had, we had an award nominated campaign called pharmacy that showcases how most medications are rooted in nature. All right. Um, the best example I could give you is probably it's a beautiful flower called Madagascar periwinkle. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks gorgeous. That's actually what's used to make uh, the chemotherapy medication known as being Christine. Um, that came in like a little baseball card style that I created. This was three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. A few LP since now have done that. I think back 40, I'll give them a little yeah, shout yeah, out because they're little, their new style baseball card, which right. rips into filters. And I love the, the look and feel of the old school to it. Right. What we did for Gorilla is we took uh, Kinder Eggs, we broke them in half, we filled them with soil and little fake potted plants. And then we just printed the pharmacy logo. Uh, we hid, I think, 10 of these around Ottawa in like places with like a lot of botanical areas and big flowers. And we asked people to find them. Anyone who found those little Kinder Eggs 
with the fake clients, they would bring them in for 15% off a purchase at the pharmacy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's and then, you nice. know, it takes a little hard work to get your hands dirty a bit making these things. But yeah, yeah. in my opinion, uh, another great one that it's not my idea, but in Westboro, there's a great artist here who does miniatures. So know me. Little, yeah, little, know me, yeah, little mini hot dogs. I just or, saw the Secret Garden stuff. They were they're that, yeah. well detailed. They're gorgeous. And what he does is he'll make little mini replicas, even ha like houses of a business, and he'll put that replica on the business. And he right. asks people to go and find them, take photos. And then through through your community, um, and especially things like the BIA, I can't, yeah. I tell every owner, like, well, have you spoken to your BIA? Yeah. Right. Because if you haven't, and especially if there's dispensaries that are currently existing and they haven't, mm -hmm. that's a great opportunity for you to show face to your community to say, I'm here right. to help. I'm here to let you guys know who I am and, and what my priorities are for my business. Right. That's, a, that's a big, a big thing I recommend to any owners yeah. to, to contact your It's BIA. like the number one thing I would tell people. Once you go into right. the neighborhood, go talk to your BIA. your BIA. Let them know that you're there and that you're willing to help and do something. Yeah. Don't ask me what BIA stands for because I, I, I don't remember. Business Improvement in Association. Association. Yeah, I think. I always yeah. forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it sounds like, you know, because of so many of these restrictions and regulations with like traditional forms of marketing, be it billboards, bus shelters, all that fun stuff, you're saying, hey, okay, screw all that stuff. I don't need it. But like, let's do what businesses should be doing, interacting with the community, cultivating, cultivating those relationships with people. And then the word of mouth will spread and that will happen organically. And it sounds like, you know, that's kind of, you know, it's working so far. Yeah, I think our, our next big goal that we're going to be starting in November is we want to create like, um, like a charity, like we've been trying, I mean, like everybody, it's, you know, we're not looking for a pat on the back. I mean, a lot of companies do it, but, but because we, I kind of approached this as if, um, like this wasn't like, you know, I own other businesses. This is my passion. This dispensary, like maybe in 10 years, it'll be like a beautiful monopoly chip. But for now, it really is about community. And so we want right. to create a rabbit, R-A-B-B-T, acts of kindness. Right. And that would be like something that we would go around the community. And like, we even thought about doing like rabbit paws and give mittens to homeless people in the winter and like just different activities right. where then we could have like our logo even on the mitts, you know, so it would be like kind of marketing, but it would say rabbit acts of kindness instead of right. rabbit hole. And right. like maybe just that brand association. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's like, it, again, it's trying to <laughs> branch away from cannabis and figure out, I think, how to become a part of a community so that people recognize you without advertising the cannabis itself. Right. 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 No. It's like it says, if you want to reach a nation, you got to start from your corner. Yeah, right. absolutely. Oh, I got goosebumps with that one. Yeah, you know, quotable, boom. That's going to be social media posts at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a I mean, smoking. Yeah. That's a smoking like, no rabbit if, 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 if you look at our Instagram feed, you the last thing I'm going to post typically is we. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Everyone else is doing it. And guess what? Everyone's selling getting the same brands. We all have our favorites. Down. And they're getting shut they're down. Getting so down. have fun. And the biggest thing I want anyone to take away from this conversation is that if you're not having fun selling weed. Yeah. But you then do it. Then you do it. You're not doing really it right. wrong. What's the point? Know. Like, get out of the way. Let the ones you're having fun you're take over. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. I think a lot of us, myself included, just any business owner, you kind of like, you want to start a business to kind of get that freedom that you wouldn't otherwise get when working your regular job, um, sure. or just having a good time. And then you like get your own business, and then you're even more stressed out about everything that's, that's going true. on. And then you're just like, ah, like, why did I do this in the first place? I'm even more stressed out and I'm not enjoying the day to day. So it's like, and I'm making less money in a lot of cases, right? So uh, you guys are absolutely right. It's like cliche as it sounds, it's like, it's all about the journey, not the destination, blah, 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 blah. blah. But like, it truly is like, and you know, it really I think, is. It really is. Like, but we're uh, in business, right? So it's like, it's it, at the end of the day, it's like, we can't shy away from that, but it doesn't yeah. mean that we can't do some good and Enjoy. try to bring back the culture into Right. the community because within the first like since legalization a lot of us has, have lost our way within the community and there hasn't been much culture and there hasn't been right. many events that we can go to because we still don't have lounges we can't do anything so we're creating events that we within the regulations that we can do to show people like yes we need safe spaces we need all these things to be able to live our lives and just yeah, yeah. we're not bothering anybody cannabis smokers need a space to get high where they're not going to be groped by drunk people right. <laughs> <laughs> listen to me government of canada cannabis users <laughs> don't want to be groped in a bar I'm thank like, you if you're no. in ottawa <laughs> this space. they just had spark in the park here in ottawa yeah. and that was that was run by a few you know lp reps and stuff and it's not it just, it just shows that if you build it they will come right yeah, that's right. It.
right. putting the time and effort into to create a space or even just an event for like-minded people to get together yeah. so yeah right. chill right. Right. yeah and it's it's nice to work in a place where you know that everybody is here because we're passionate about it mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. we're, we're really here every day because we yeah. love to do what we do. So and like Sarah said at the beginning, it's like we all have that one thing in common and it's like our passion for cannabis. Yeah. Even if we, that's the only thing we have in common. You can like sit down with people for like hours and have good conversations and we're sharing a joint or whatever. Yeah. It's just, or just stare at a cat. Yeah, just stare at a cat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're living our lives. Yeah. But it's just to bring that sense of community back. And I feel like we're really doing something cool here. No, that's fun. That's, that's, that's super, super fun. Um, on the, uh, the digital side of things, are you guys doing anything special to, uh, incentivize like Google reviews? Cause I know that's also like a pretty big portion of if people are looking online, they just automatically look at the reviews. Wait guys, I, mean, I don't want to break. I don't want to break. Okay. But we have a level six local guide, local guide in the <laughs> store. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't think a lot of dispensaries have that flex so yes. he's been instrumental in yes. helping us 100%. no he's <laughs> been like reviews. our our employee has been great at like navigating the google and replying to the google reviews mm, like yeah customers i know we were waiting for like our qr code that we want to get done and then get the stat the customers to leave the google reviews and then we're like hey we need right. a discount or also it's ottawa like people are so friendly and helpful here like you can like everybody just wants to help each other here yeah. i find so it's, yeah. it's a really nice space to be a small business owner because you just ask someone you're like hey do you have a good experience would you mind leaving a review and like you know nine times out of ten if not almost ten out of ten people are like absolutely yeah. like yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a cool trick that i learned was from another owner was that in terms of incentivizing for reviews um you don't actually really need to incentivize the customer because like if they're coming back, like they're incentivized by just wanting to do good for you. Just like that general reciprocity of, Hey, you have a good product. I'm going to buy it. Here's a good review. And I want to support you to make sure you guys are doing well. Um, if you have a lot of bud tenders, I know you said you have your, you know, your superstar level six guide running the show. Um, but uh, they found that incentivizing the people who would ask for the reviews uh, resulted in like a higher uptake because all it really is is the differential between how many people you ask will then lead to how many reviews that you get, right? Um, so the more people you ask, the more reviews that you're going to get. Um, and for some of the stores, if you know uh, this, you know, client had four locations, so they had to talk to all the bud tenders. They just had so many moving parts, so they did like a, a store incentive for whoever got the most reviews yeah. from that store. Those guys won, and the incentive wasn't to the customer because the customer, as you said, Sarah, like will all typically already do the review. Um, but if you incentivize the asker, they will then ask over and over and over and over again, which will then yeah. lead to more Google reviews. So that's a, a tip that, you know, if you didn't know, now you know. No, 100%. Actually, uh, whenever I deal with, uh, with with ZigZag, if I have multiple locations that are same owner or franchised, right. I'll do that exact same thing. I'll say for the next 30 days, whichever location sells more ZigZag papers, I have this incentive for your prize. Not for the people coming in, for the people selling the product, right? So exactly, um, it's. Uh, I wouldn't want to be an, L- an LP rep nowadays in the sense of having a <laughs> shelf space. Yeah, um, I'm a little safer in my position where the product I have every everyone needs. Like, if you need rollies for everyone's weed, right? So <laughs> right. I'm in a bit different area there. Um, a little more neutral too. Yeah, a little more neutral. So no I one's mean, gonna not sell the exact same. You know, it's because again, uh, from from this podcast and from your instagram i personally because i've seen a lot of your episodes i've thank learned you. thank you i i you're welcome I, i've learned many things too you know what i mean like it's it's important yeah. you have a very large different sc- uh, scope of guests too right which is which is interesting and i actually like to learn from the people who have franchises to understand what's working and what doesn't you know like in ottawa there's uh i think i forget if it's, if it's a shiny butter spirit leaf but they took over at Tim Hortons Drive. Shiny bun, definitely shiny shiny bun. Bun. So you can't he physically go that. in, I don't think. Yeah. Our initial, whatever Sarah's initial plans that she wanted a drive through, and then we couldn't find like we couldn't you find can't, You can't get them from the Starbucks and the no, AW. Like I tried bidding on them and they'd be yeah. gone. A really cool one is Pot of Gold in Cornwall has a really cool drive through. Oh yeah? Like an old one from like the 70s in this mm-hmm. building. Yes. So it's like it's really cool. And Cornwall's a gorgeous city, anyways. Yeah. That's really, yeah. But oh, anyway. that's that's cool. I mean, if if there's another, I guess to name drop another podcast, Angelo, there's a the Euphoria Wellness podcast. Um, okay. The owner there and the managers there, really cool. That you know, that's where I got that tip from, and they have a lot of just good kind of ideas. Again, like 
it's funny because like I'm doing this marketing thing and it's kind of turned into this pseudo consulting gig because like I'm talking to the same people. You guys are just in different parts of the world, but you pretty much have the same problems, right? It's like, how do you sell product? How do you talk to your customer? How do you do these different things? Um, and it's really cool me hopping on these podcasts because one gets the brand out, all that fun stuff. But like, I'm just like learning a lot, like a ridiculous amount because I'm talking to people who are in the trenches, actually doing work, not like, Hey, I started a veterinary clinic and, you know, now I'm an expert in all businesses. It's like, no, I'm talking to actual dispensary owners or people in the space that are like doing the thing. Right. Um, so that's another really, really good one. If you want to go take a look at it. I will. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm actually, I'm dealing with Peak Farm Labs. We're, we're sending suppositories to Australia in the next month. So it's like perfect example of me learning what's going on in that climate is basically like Canada four years ago. Right. So yeah. Those conversations are, for me are exciting because they're like, what about this, this, and this? I just start laughing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, you guys don't even have a what's Oh, yeah. Thing. But, you know, that is the same. It, it's not Australia. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's, it's not exactly the same. Yeah. There are some things that I'm learning from those things as well. But kind of to speak to what you're saying, yeah, it's always there, there's you can always learn something new. And if you're not learning something new every day in this industry, then, you. you know, you're not learning something new every day in life, you're wasting life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so what are you guys doing on the email and SMS side in terms of kind of le uh, leveraging your existing customer? Personally, base? I hate it. Is there anyone in the world that likes these things? You know, I wouldn't mind a text message maybe like three times a year from a company, but I would much prefer a personalized phone call. So one thing that we do is if you come in, we have an Excel document that's been there since day one. Mm -hmm. And we've always started with a tiny little inventory, uh, which was actually a recommendation that I got from a couple of people, including our um, buddy rep. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah. And shout out um, to Buddy. Yeah, shout out to Buddy. <laughs> Miles and, and yeah, hey Miles. But, and uh, so we started off with a small inventory. And then when people come in, I ask them, listen, like, what do you think of our inventory? What do you usually smoke? If I were to bring in what you like, because I expect my clients to kind of, you know what I mean? Know what they want. And so right. we'll order it and then we'll contact people to be like, Hey, your stuff is in. Like, do you want to come in and yeah. like, you know what I mean? See what else we got. So, right. um, if we were to do direct contact, it would be like consent was given. Right. Um, it, like maybe somewhere down the line, um, but personally, it's not really my It's a big style. investment, though. Like, I, those are very, like, yeah. I just this week typed, uh, I typed stop to one that was coming in. So it was from a dispensary. I, right. it's funny, because one of the questions you gave us on your list was about this. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what this is going on in a sense. Yeah. I did it. I The first time they sent the text, um, it's, it was kind of bland. I, I feel like they could spice it up a little bit. But I hit the link. I get the point they're going for, but in my mind, I was like, I just don't need this right now. Yeah. And by the time I do need weed, I'm already going to forget about this text. Mm -hmm. yeah. That deal is going to be done. Yeah. Like, so that being said, I think it, I, with our size and growth right now, it's not for us. But at the same weird. time, I'm not poo-pooing it. I just right. don't think I personally know enough of who's who's gaining what from it. You know, maybe that's right. something you can even let me know if you think. Yeah, of, seriously. Of, I just of a positive story or feedback from this. Yeah. yeah. Like I just I. Yeah. Anyway, it's just a personal preference for me. And I, and I have a background in sales. Like I yeah. am business development sales, like from up my career. And it's right. just, I don't find it a very good sales technique. I think that right. um, you need to know what a customer wants before you can recommend anything. And so that outbound sales technique where you just start like telling people what you've got, right. I find it's not as effective as having that, like, you know, where you qualify their needs oh, and you offer them the product they actually need. And that's why when you come in, we don't even have those rotating menus. Like no, we just have a button of standing there. And we're going to ask you, like, what are you doing? Like, how big of a joint do you need? Like, or do you want, you know, anyway. We Intention. Just, and if somebody Intention, doesn't yeah. want to talk, we do have the tablet and menu tablet they can look at, but we've completely opted out with the big screens. It's a waste. Yeah, and the tablet's, like, behind the counter. Like, what, yeah. you, you got to ask for it. Yeah, <laughs> I, another shout out, like, there's a location in Ottawa called Plateau. Mm -hmm. Plateau is literally a circular room with, like, it looks like, a, like an it's old tiny. cave. And especially when they have it, like, lit up at night, there's nothing in there. It's mm. just a butt tender, and it forces you to go and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So right. you can say to them, yes, I'm obviously here for weed. That's why I came <laughs> in. But again, just yeah. say, hey, what are your, you know, what what notes are you looking for? What flavors do you like? That, to me, is is where it's going to, now, let's be all honest about this. It's not going to yeah. be there for 10 more years. But when I walk into the LCBO, and if it's my exactly. grandfather's yeah. birthday, and I want to drop $300 on whiskey, I need to talk to someone who knows, who knows whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Not right just someone right so that's i kind of think when we originally met the idea that she gave me was you know tea lounge vip a little more hoka tour 
a little elusive. Like think about you know, sitting down and having a waiter come to you and say, smell this. Right. Well, yeah, this, exactly. You know, like, like little private like screen rooms, you know, so you get some right. privacy. So like, I feel like us now is preparing this as a brand mm -hmm. so that exactly. when those opportunities arise, this brand makes the most sense exactly. for that. That is right. the rabbit. That's what we're doing the spin off of the RIVBT. That is why we did the RIVBT is that like I know that a dispensary for the next couple of years, we're gonna be we're gonna we're not gonna be becoming millionaires off of this. But there is so many opportunities to make this industry better. Mm -hmm. Um that it's like trying to incubate the brand. Everyone's just like treating it like a gold rush. Everybody went out and expanded as fast as they could and nobody right. came up with anything clever. Right? right. So like there's not a there's not a like personally I feel like there's not a dispensary on the market. There's a couple. Uh, like not not that there's not a dispensary on the market, yeah. but not any of the ones that expanded, right? Like I think like they're, they're, well, they're just chains at that point, right? Exactly. There's no there's no like for brand. I've never been there, but apparently there's a dispensary in the GTA somewhere that the owners are huge Grateful Dead fans. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's so yeah. cool. And the whole I've place is just for deadheads. It's so oh. cool. Now, a lot of people would say that's a very small demographic. I'm not a deadhead, but I oh, if, yeah, if I'm in that area, I'm going there because I know like it's an experience. It's yeah, it's right. a little so bit beautiful. outside the box, right? So, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. that's, we want to do the same thing, just like kind of incubate, create a brand, really understand our market. And then, you know, in a couple of years when the dust settles, like maybe there'll be opportunities to expand or do other things in the industry. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, I mean, look, you're doing the right thing because when you delay the ask in terms of asking for your customers for whatever it is, right, and you expand the time horizon in terms of how long you ask, like one year, two year, three year, when you ask that third time, because you have given so much over that period of time, you can then cash in that ask, that good favor to be like, hey, okay, now's the time. You know, thank you for coming together. I don't know if you, you know, you would call your customer, you have a fan name for your customers or anything like that. Um, but like you can say, hey, look, you know, we're doing this cool thing. Let's, you know, let's let's conquer the world with we're, we're, the world with it. And then you'll get that exponential growth, right? Yeah. Um, but to quickly just touch on the email and SMS, um, mm -hmm. you guys are absolutely right about all those different things, right? But I do think it's the exchange of value that is being lost when using these SMS and email things. And what I mean by that is, Sarah, you, you know, you have BDR experience. It's just, can you hit these metrics? Can you hit X amount of closes and X amount of reach outs by X amount of people and just kind of talk to them repeatedly? And until they say no, like you will keep following up with them a million times, right? It's very like, uh, like just quantitative driven, right? Now with these emails, people are viewing it the exact same way. They're like, hey, I have a thousand people. If I blast a thousand people, if 20 of them end up purchasing, then I get to add, you know, this amount to the to the monthly spend on, you know, the monthly revenue, right? Now, um, to your guys' credit, you're seeing that this is not the right way to do it. So uh, the platform or the strategy itself, I don't think is the thing that's wrong. It's about how people are using it specifically. Um, and, you know, I can't go ahead and tell you, like, you do exactly this and this will be the end result. But it is on that brand building sense where you're not just peppering them with a text message every single day saying you have a 10 percent thing off. Like, OK, I get it. Like, fine. Um, you know, send it to me every, you know, once in a while and then you can kind of sort that out. And then even on the email, it's even slightly longer form. So, like, what are long form messages that you can send to your existing customers that they will truly, truly enjoy to where, when they open up that email, they're like, you know, I'm super happy I'm reading this or like, oh, it's Monday. I can't wait for the new rabbit hole email. And we're, we're peppered with e-commerce things like, you know, shirts and hoodies and, you know, all these different things and discounts and all of this stuff that like we become numb to kind of this email marketing stuff, but you're not pull, you know, bringing it back to the polarization and like the, the Disney hat, like you need to emotionally polarize people. Um, and the way you do that with emails, you do the thing that other people aren't typically doing, right? Um, and there yeah. isn't like one size fix all, but, you know, Angelo, to your point about like, you know, does it work? Does it not work? Like, yes, it does work. It's about how you use the thing, the tool um, in order for it to be truly effective to reach your specific goals. Um, and, you know, that would be my two cents on that. No, I yeah. appreciate that. And I mean, like, yeah, for sure. I, but it's trying to figure out, I guess, how to use it properly. Because I even think about reps, like no offense, there's some reps out there that do an excellent job sending me emails every single week to tell me about their new specials. They right. personalize them. And like, if I'm going to be real, I might read the subject line in the first line of that email. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I just know in my mm -hmm. experience and I know I'm not everybody. No, but, no, um, no but it's trying, but you're opening up my, my mind to this because it's like, it's true. Like, is there a way 
you know, like if I had any background in software development or something like that, I would try and make it so that the, we would know in the account what they bought. And then the text would be two days later say, how was X strain? Yeah, I mean, yes, there are. Like y for good, click N for, for bad. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? And that's an engagement. Like, I'm sure there are ways to use these yeah. tools where it could be much more effective. I just haven't figured out a way that doesn't seem like just an annoying. I think one, I think one thing I'm guilty of is because we are outside the box, I think that sometimes we feel that everything we have. Yeah, everything has to be, to be outside, outside the box. The box. Yeah, sure. right. It doesn't always have to be that way. But That's like, our yeah, you know? <laughs> so when it comes to an email campaign, and I go through this with my other businesses where it's like, how much is too much? Mm -hmm. like, you guys are not annoying though. For well, like, like for, with so zigzag, for like, example, for hybrid, I guess we do I think four a month. Now there's 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 more reasoning behind that. Different clientele. This is B two B business, right? So hmm. I personally think four is too much. Um, so with this, like again, besides again the obvious of cannabis, how can we use this tool to entice people to still click but still gather that data, gather the sales, right? Yeah. Whether it's a uh, Here's two pictures. Find the differences. Like right. that's the kind of stuff that I want to like offer that. people. Right, right. You know. So I think my my thing is finding the right tools to do it and something right. that's cool enough that I'm happy with. And then also hopefully the HCO kind of like revisits the regulations exactly. and stuff like that, that, that to that allow too. us to do it because you know right. more than once we've heard from HCO people that we're really not uh we're we're not a threat to the kids and the whatever that the like the politicians have always been saying like we have to right. protect the kids we're not gonna let a 12 year old in but also what i'm saying is that 18 year old in. exactly 18 year old <laughs> either um, <laughs> if, hopefully they'll loosen up on regulations to allow us to be able to utilize screen tools because it just makes it really hard for people to like you know so it's like i can't do anything yeah you know? like we gotta you we know. have to like wrap our we gotta figure everything out um right. Yeah, it's still yeah. a big industry with a lot of opportunity that there's, mm -hmm. that there's like, you know. Um, well, this is why the biggest happen. events, the biggest buzz you hear in Canada is, you know, the kind summer fair, kind winter fair, hall of flowers. People are trying to reinvent something like the expo because I was at the first lift. It was yeah. it, back then. It was, it was mind blowing, right? Because it was the first of its kind. It was different. It was, it was a very interesting mix because it was in Toronto right after the Project Claudia raids. Yeah. So people visiting this event were either for or against legalization. Yeah. So there was a lot of clash. There was a big clash. Yeah. Like Someone who's working in a legal booth, I had a lot. Like I had to gr grin and bear a lot that weekend. You could cut the tension, right? But I feel like I, I really got through to a lot of people because of who right. I when they saw me behind on that side of the fence. Right. They're like, why are you there? It's like, well, let yeah. me explain to you why I'm here. Because yeah. you, you have to be in here. a few years. Either you get on board now, or yeah. you're all going to be left outside in the cold, right? So, yeah. and, and like when legalization started, I just wanted to make T-shirts and sell them that said, "I don't want your Walmart weed, or I don't want your Amazon weed." And like, thank God that some people got in the industry and like, because you know, a lot of people that started off in this industry were like old tomato farmers and started trying to grow cannabis and stuff. You know, like it wasn't necessarily literally, people who were tomato. yeah, literally. I got stories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, long, that's the yeah. Anyway, I think we went off on a tangent there, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, I love it. I love it. I mean, yeah, like I think the email thing or just anything for that matter is just what is the proper exchange of value and how do you over deliver on the thing? So Sarah, for example, when you're getting the every week emails from your LP saying they have a new product in store, you're getting that from everybody, right? Yeah. Now, if that <laughs> rep was like, hey, Sarah, uh, I did some analysis on how many people are purchasing this specific product in your specific area. When it comes Christmas time, this does really, really well. I highly recommend you choose this product over this product. You're yeah. going to be like, damn, I'm going to take a serious look at this. So right. isn't it what we've like, done. However, I tell you, but like what I've started to do is I've been delegating those emails. Good to the staff because right. I have to awesome. like I'm Sarah's right hand man. I can't be right. looking at emails all day. I have so many other exactly. things. Exactly. That's do. what I was gonna say. So but I even staff, read the email. Yeah, the, the staff has been doing it like one of my team leads. She's been taking care of it. And then like I'll read them quickly, but then I'll have a follow up with her, be like, Hey, what did we read? And then make right. sure to also send because the reps will send certain like example seven. They just came they came out with a dual cart. Sam sent us an email and it had like the instruction manual in it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't come with the package, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, does it come correct. with it? Yeah. It doesn't come. So I sent that to the staff and that was like, perfect, it's in there and that's it. Yeah. So they'll send certain information, but like Sarah and I will miss it sometimes. Yeah. So that's delegated it to the staff. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I mean, it, it comes to the point to where like, how do you make an email so good that you don't miss the email? Like that is the level of value that we're talking about. Not like, like, I think you should, you know, delegate, systematize, automate, eliminate. Those are the four kind of things if you want to build a business. But 
and I'm not saying it's easy, right? This is purely theoretical. It's just like, yeah, how do I build an email so good that I want people to, to read it? So for example, what yeah. I'm doing is like, obviously I'm still doing my outreach, that sort of thing. But like I have my email list and all the podcasts that I have, I will quickly summarize the top five points on what we spoke about on this call. So if anybody finds it relevant, they will then just click the video and look at it, right? It's yeah. good faith in terms of just moving forward. Um, depending on how many podcasts I might do, I might send out one a week, I might be one a month. But for the most part, like I'll tell you that my open rates and, and read rates are a lot higher than what you would typically see in the marketplace. Because I'm not like, hey, expiring deal. Here's Black Friday. <laughs> Work with my agency yeah, services yeah. for 30% yeah, I mean. off. And I'm not just sending that all the time. Yeah. Um, but if I can continually sell, not sell, but show valuable information uh, to the people that I'm putting it towards, it typically works out best. Now, yeah, for you guys, it would just be trying to figure out what that secret sauce is. Yeah, so I think what is going to end up being is these little mini events that we host is that we'll reach out to people to be like, hey, come on by. Also, mm -hmm. here's our new products, right? So like, hey, we've got this like really crazy like movie night happening. We're going to have like chips and like pops and everything mm -hmm. for free just for donations for charity. And then like, by the way, here's the products that we just dropped. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're, I mean, it might be something like that. We're still, I mean, we're still in the baby phases. So yeah. we're open to all to be lots of testing and I think it's better you know as long as you have the foundational things put in place and you're not putting the business at risk thinking about all these kind of like outside different things like it's just test 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 and what works will work and what doesn't you just don't do it if your movie nights work great if they don't just don't do them again right exactly. maybe exactly. you're going to do sports events or UFC uh you know whatever it is like it'll just pick the thing once it works yeah. just do more of it That's yeah it. I want to risk night yeah That's like me doing. taking it I'm taking a dice roll on this whole Pokemon event, right? right? But it's like, I know enough people who consume cannabis and play cards or even are in the collectible space because I come from that world. It's like, we have a second floor that's just sitting there yeah. that if people want to get together, and again, that's, that's what cannabis does, it brings people together. Yeah. If I can get, if I can squeeze a bit of revenue out of this, yeah. you know, and it's, um, what, what's the harm, right? And again, it might work, it might not. In, in yeah. two months, I might have a whole cannabis Pokemon league Going Maybe. to school. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. And, uh, but we're, uh, but Brought to you by Rabbit Hole. For all we know, it flops, and we just do, like, events. I think, like like we all said, these movie nights have been a bit of a gauge for us to say, yeah. okay, if we right. offer space for, for something to we'll be a purpose behind it, right. we, know, we know they'll come, but I want you to purchase things when you come. I want you right. to enjoy the experience, but still, you know, put money in my pocket. So how, right. how, do, we, how, do, we, how do we do that balancing act? Yeah. Kind of thing? Yeah. So I'm pretty positive, I'd say, for the most yeah. part, for the moment. Yeah. Well, my two cents on that one would be, and I, have you have you started the movie nights already or no? Yeah, yeah, we did it. We've been doing it for, we did the first one with just a couple of people. And then right. the last two ones have been open invites. And right. we've had a couple of people from, we have a few people from other dispensaries. We have reps that come right. and hang right. out with each other. Like Angela said, the community is very small. So what, right. like 15 reps or so and everybody, like they all, we all hang out. Like I'm right. just, that's what I said is like this the spot's becoming kind of a safe space and like a hangout yeah. spot, which we really be like. So, so it's like well, yeah. we can't complain about that. It's definitely well, what what I would try and do, um again, just my two cents for my corner, is that like uh movies, people can watch movies anywhere, right? Like mm -hmm. just if they want to go watch a movie, especially like you know, uh, especially if it's not a movie that they don't want to watch, like, you know, who's really going to come, right? Right now, it sounds like you're getting a lot of people just because they like cannabis and your dispensary, right? So you already have the people in your community. That's great, right? But can you organize events where people don't normally or easily find other people who do the same thing? Yeah. So I think that Pokemon thing is a good idea, yeah. right? Because like how many people do Pokemon stuff together? And now you're getting people from a different niche, a different demographic, and then yeah. combining the two worlds yeah. together. Uh, but maybe it's not Pokemon. Maybe it's Yu-Gi-Oh. Maybe it's Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe it's yeah. Red. Like it will be one of those, right? Yeah. Um, it's about which one will be again emotionally polarizing enough to be like, hey, I'm so so on cannabis, but like I need to be within this group of people that I truly resonate with, right? Yeah. And I've found that like if it's just movie night, movie night's great. Don't get me wrong, but if you don't like the movie, one, you're not going to come, and two, like I can watch a movie on my couch, and exactly. do anything I want, right? Um. But if the movies are super successful for you, then go for it. But I would even try, like, if you're doing movies, you could even go to a specific theme of movies that you do, right? So maybe there's yeah, like a, like huge, all huge, yeah. Yeah, a huge yeah. horror community. But again, like, you know, people who would want to go watch a horror movie probably would just get a bunch of friends and watch it anyways. Just yeah. Yeah. Home, you're right. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So what can you guys do that people normally can't do? And then that would be the value because you're providing something that they won't normally have access to or be able to organize by themselves or whatever it is. And then you guys can become the community for that community. Yeah. Um, I like that. 
Yeah, I agree with Thank that. Thank you for Definitely. your time. Thank you, Brandon. Like, we, yeah, like, no worries. No worries. Eating all of our wheels and our whole body like, <laughs> like mm, well, <laughs> we're, 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 we're switching <laughs> ideas with each other. Um, but I mean, look, like I, I think just based on just our general conversation, we touched on a lot of the topics that we that we had, um, you know, just that I gave you before. Um, but I do want to finish up with like, what would you guys say? And no cheating. I want to get one from each of you <laughs> uh, to the dispensary owner who's looking to take it to the next level, whatever that means to, to, to you, whether it's building a better team, making more money, building a better community. What would you say to another owner that's like, hey, I think you should implement this or at least focus on this strategy to get to that next level? <laughs> Kind of I would cost. say push the push the <laughs> push the envelope as, as far as you can. In what way? If you think that, oh, I don't know, example like regulations hold us back from selling certain things or doing certain events, try it once and see what happens. <laughs> try it once. Just as long as that's you're answer, as love long it. as you're yeah, that's that's just me. But as long as you know you're you know what you're doing is okay, mm -hmm. then it's not like something bad. But just push the envelope because if you're if you're willing to take the risk the first people will follow suit and then hopefully that will make regulations change right. yeah there's only two, i believe i could be wrong there's only two other locations in ottawa dispensaries that don't have frosted fronts frosted mm -hmm. glass windows they took the time to do their space proper i think one is the good cannabis company mm -hmm. and when you drive by it it is beautiful. gorgeous big beautiful windows and like i feel for dispensaries who don't have that service mm. So that's an example of us pushing the boundaries. Nice. I was a little nervous at first. Lo and behold, AGCO comes like, to their what? visit. They said, you guys are totally fine because we don't promote any cannabis on the first floor. Problem solved. Right? They literally so, bought the wall and had all the stuff. The contractor was there. We were measuring out. We were starting to build the wall. And I was like, no, stop. We're not doing <laughs> I don't want a wall. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm like, go home. I'll pay you. Go home. I'm not going to build a wall. We're just going nice. to see what happens. And we're, yeah. we're fine. Nice. Um, my answer will be a very... Um, business-minded entrepreneurial answer <laughs> guys you watch your costs if you're going to be opening a dispensary or i guess if you already have one it's too late but like you want to have the lowest rent possible negotiate all your contracts like you can negotiate on every contract She's ever a great right? negotiator, like you know way. yeah like <laughs> it's, it's put pressure on people to constantly be trying to get better prices like in this environment you need to have your costs as low as possible and the other thing i would say is don't cheap out on your staff mm -hmm. do not cheap out on human beings they are the ones that are going to make or break your dispensary right now. People, it's like your local corner store. And the only thing that makes you buy milk from one guy over another is the person behind the counter every time. And so cut, watch your expenses, but don't cheap out on people. And that would be the advice that I would give. Nice. Um, nice. Uh, I, I've been asked this question 10 times a day for the past 20 years. So I always say <laughs> the exact same thing. It's not maybe so much business related. Like but launder money. Whatever you do well in life, right? incorporate right. cannabis into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. don't, <laughs> don't do it the other way. Yeah. So, you know, four or five years ago when everyone's like, how do I get into weed? How do I get into weed? How do I say, well, first of all, retail is going to be no different than working at the Gap. So slow your roll. Yeah. Um, so, you know, are you a good cook? Start cooking with cannabis. Do you have a green thumb? Start looking at the gardening community, the growing community, you know? Are you a stand-up comic? Have a five-minute set on cannabis jokes. Like, what you do well is what you need to bring to cannabis. You don't need to bring cannabis to you because if you have a license, if you're about to go down this journey, my honest response is don't do it. Uh, <laughs> right now, anyways, you know, and if you are going to do it again, like, it might, it's maybe not the most sound business advice, but I, I'm just such a firm believer that you have to do things differently right. and you have to think outside the box. I use myself as an example. I smoke a lot of weed. I spend a lot of money on, on this service and, and, and in this world. If you can convince someone like me to come to your location, you've done your job, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, from a collector's point of view, from like, you know, someone who's a fan of like comics and cards and that world, you always want to physically leave with something, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, I'll come back if I know I can get number two of that series next week. Like I'll take the trip out. Nothing to do with weed. Maybe it's a, a cup holder from an LP and every week they're, they're launching a new style, right? And I need all four. I have to have all four. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to come back even if on one of those days I don't need weed because I know that's the day's dropping. I think McDonald's is a great example. Mm -hmm. Everyone here, they did those adult Happy Meals a few weeks back. What? 
Yeah, there you yeah, go. What? Dildos and anal beads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, McDonald's a few, just two weeks ago you had uh, adult Happy Meals for 48 hours. And the toys in these Happy Meals are from uh, a toy, uh, an adult collectible toy brand that took beloved characters. I'm 43 years so old, so I know Grimace and Birdie and all those people. Yeah. But they were all messed up and they had like four eyes or two mouths because of the brand. That right there is genius mcdonald's doesn't McDonald's service okay. people they've stopped servicing like i'm going on a, on a rant now but like I don't know. you know mcdonald's used to brand to kids with the caboose and the clown and all and then it stopped mm-hmm. if you guys ever yeah, it just it stopped it they they shifted and then it was like we're loving it and fresh and fan and then it, that all kind of stopped that choice they made to do an adult happy meal was genius in my opinion where Nothing changed. It's still either McNuggets or a Big Mac. There's nothing new added to the menu. So your overheads, like, the, all they did was give you a bigger a box. box and a toy that grown men and women <laughs> needed to get within 48 hours. And it, it worked, right? So th- that's my advice is, like, if you can be that person to offer something unique. The one idea we had here that we haven't followed through with yet because we're still looking at logistics, but, you know, it's, it's no secret. Alibaba has everything you can order, right? And we found these really cool, old-school-looking Alice in Wonderland-style st- postage stamps. Mm. Simple loyalty card. You come in here every time, you get a stamp. Yeah, it's one thing to get a stamp. I'm the kind of sucker that if you tell me every one of these stamps is different and like an old-school scene, I want the stamps. And I'm going to probably keep that card in my drawer just yeah. for nostalgic just purposes, it. right? So th- from a collector's mentality and point of view, um, and the reason I say that is because in the past few years, the collecting world has tripled in value. A lot of things has been saturated, but if you look at the mentality of um, blind box items and sales for for the younger generations, people are willing to pay money for something that they don't know what they're going to get inside. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, we're going to have trick-or-treat bags for sale starting today at the rabbit hole. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> mystery boxes. Mystery boxes for everyone. Yeah, yeah, trick-or-treat bags for sale. There's my range. Come on down. <laughs> Oh, awesome. That was that was fantastic. And lastly, where can people find you guys if they want to get in touch or buy products from you? They can find us at rabbit without an eye no eye and rabbit without an eye hole.com and on our Instagram rabbit.hole or you can find me ganja babe with two A's as a babe. Uh, so, you can find me on all social platforms. I go under Smoke the Stigmas. I go by Smoke the Stigmas. And awesome. you can find the dispensary at 503 Rito Street. That is 503 Rideau Street, downtown Ottawa, next to Sandy Hill. Ottawa, you students, shout out to you. We're waiting for you. If you're over the age of nine, come through. Come through. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very thank much. You, uh, that was it for this episode. Uh, like I said, I'm your host, Brandon Kwan, founder of Cannabud Marketing, uh, the marketing <laughs> agency of choice for all the specialties both in Canada and the United States. Thanks for watching. Bye.